Let's set up our typography in our design system. So come over here to theme settings and the third option down here, typography and icons, and here it is. So the first thing you wanna do is set up your primary and secondary font families over here. And we have these two because it's a common design pattern to have one font family for your display or header type and one for your body copy. Now you may have set these already, and there are three different ways you may have set them. First is in here in your colors when you did explore project colors over here to the explore. If you set a theme in these options right here, these have different type families for your primary and secondary type families. So you may have set them there. You could have also set them if you generated with AI or if you imported from Figma. But if you haven't, let's go set those up. So right now we've got our primary font family set to outfit. And what this is doing is you can see down here that we've got various font families set between the primary and secondary family. And if you click in here to change it, you can see that we've got the whole open source catalog of Google fonts, or you can add a custom font. Now I'm gonna add a custom font here because I've got a display font I want to use. So let's come in here and add a font. Let's upload the files. Great, and let's give it a name. And what I'm looking for here is that the mapping is correct. That is what the type weight and style, like italic or not, maps to the correct font weight and italic here. So thankfully this typeface has that information in the title of it. So I can just go through and make sure everything is mapped correctly. And it is so I can add this font. Beautiful. And we get a rendering of it here. Let's just add that in. Okay, great. So now I've got my primary and secondary font family set up. The next step is to work through each of these options for each of the type weights. And keep in mind that Flutterflow is real time rendering this type. So what we see over here is the actual type. So if I were to make this very small, you can see that we're getting a preview right here. Okay, so the first thing is to set up your type scale. That is your font sizes through each one of these options. And the idea of typographic scale is that you want enough difference between the type sizes that it's immediately clear to your users that they are indicating different levels in the hierarchy. So a heading is different from the body copy, but not too much difference so that one overwhelms another, grabbing all of the user's attention. Having a good typographic scale creates a harmonious reading experience that effortlessly distinguishes between the different types of text. Now, if you have a brand guideline or style guide, your typographic scale will already be set up. But if you don't, there's easy tools out there like this website, typescale.com, that you can set your base type size of your body copy and then choose a type of scale about how it scales it up and even choose a font family from Google Fonts. And even if yours is not in here, you can find one that's close enough. And then you can see this scale right here and then just copy the pixel value into Flutterflow. And if you click on this pane, you can actually see this type scale in action. So right now we have this type scale set up and we can see how it reads. And once you like that type scale, you can just take these values right here and copy them into Flutterflow. Okay, next you've got your letter spacing or kerning. And you're probably not gonna mess with this because the letter spacing is very carefully set by the type designer. And so the distance between the characters is already in the typeface. If you do mess with letter spacing at all, the main use is when you have really large display type, sometimes the characters get very spaced apart and you need to tighten that up a little. But most likely you won't be messing with letter spacing. Next, you have italic, and that is all you're doing is you're telling Flutterflow which of these is indeed italic. And you wanna make sure it actually is italic. Now, this will only work if the weight that you have selected, so here, normal, actually has an italic weight. And you never wanna force an italic, that is, allow a browser to simply tilt your letters. Because an italic, once again, was very carefully designed by the type designer. But if it is italic, you can just switch it on here, and once again, you'll see it rendered. Next, you set your type color. And since you already have your color set up, you can choose from one of your theme colors. And once again, because we're creating the whole design system, if you set it to, for instance, your secondary color, and then later you go and change your secondary color, this will change with it. Okay, awesome. So you wanna go through all of your type weights and set them up. After that, you might be done. But if you're shipping your app on significantly different screen sizes, like 
mobile, and web, then you're going to want to make your type responsive. And when you do that, you can see that we have two other options that are set. And these are just duplicate tabs from our main type setting that we did. And what you want to do here is set up your type the same way, but for your different device sizes. And that's how to set up your typography in your design system in Flutterflow.